U.S. Farm Report is brought to you by Smart Nutrition MAP plus MST. Experience the latest, most efficient system for delivering sulfur and phosphate to meet your crop's needs with Smart Nutrition MAP plus MST. Learn more at smartnutritionmst.com. Well, what is the key to soil health? Michelle Rook ground truths the answer as she searches how to flip your soil on your farm. Iowa farmer Michael Vitito is building on the success his father and grandfather have had building a soil health system on their farm. So our operation has been primarily no-till since the 80s um, and then about 10 years ago uh, cover crops started to get into play here and kind of been playing around with that and then the last five six years we've really been starting to push the cover crops and we've been 100 percent cover crops on all of our acres the last few years. Planting cereal rye ahead of soybeans is when they started seeing a big difference in their ability to control resistant weeds and over time cut their herbicide use. We've kind of figured out a way to not only cut back on the weed pressure but we're also cutting back on the amount of chemicals that we're using. So we've cut our chemical use by we're probably close to 75 percent right now um, so yeah, we're, you know, if you're only using 25% of the chemicals that you were before, all of a sudden that starts to pay for your cover crop seed and whatnot. Vidito has also had success utilizing the available forage from cover crops for his growing cattle herd. What I would like to do eventually would be to take the cattle and put them out on our cover crops and graze the cover crops, uh, you know, in the off season, you know, grazing corn stalks and grazing cereal rye and, and whatnot, and then hopefully eventually uh, playing with doing some full season forage mixes with, you know, warm season, warm season forages like sorghum sedan grass and cowpeas. Ohio producer Les Seiler has been no-tilling since 1986. Along the way, he's diversified his row crop rotations by adding alfalfa and wheat. Then in 2008, he planted cover crops, first behind wheat, then row crops. So we started using interseeding to do, to uh, get that done and now we uh, interseed uh, corn acres after Labor Day with an airplane. In our soybean acres, we uh, drive through with a high boy sprayer or high boy seeder. Tyler says they too are seeing better weed control with their cover crops. And the increased microbiological activity in their soils has also cut another input bill. It gives us the ability to cut back on our commercial, commercial fertilizers, cut back or eliminate in some cases. I mean, in this, in this particular field here, we haven't applied phosphorus here. Um, we just harvested our eighth corn crop with zero phosphorus at planting time. This early innovator says over the last 40 years, they've seen reduced wind and water erosion due to the aggregate stability of their soil. Plus, healthier soils increase the resiliency of their crops, which translates into yield. There's more to um, keeping your soil healthy and profitability that way because when you do get that bad period or a dry, dry, hot period, I think we can mitigate the, the stress that we put on these plants and, and, and maintain yields. I think we definitely are able to maintain yields. His advice for success is to remember the soil is alive and treating it the way Mother Nature intended makes it sustainable for the future. I'm Michelle Rook reporting for U.S. Farm Report. Thanks, Michelle. Well, when you talk about tariffs, that was really the buzz a few years ago. So what is the latest on tariffs? That is a viewer question that John Phipps digs into and customer support. That's right after the break. An update on tariffs and inflation.